Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sewn. Today we are going to be reviewing all the important key features that you may need for a quadratics test coming up. So the first thing we got is if you have y equals x squared minus 5x minus 3, if I wanted you to solve by finding the consecutive integers but not actually using the quadratic formula, you would need to type it in your graphing calculator if you wanted the consecutive integers for the solution. So you would type it in your graphing calculator. You would look at the two values and it would look something like this. That graph in particular after typing it in your calculator and you would have to look and be like, well, I don't know what this number actually is, but it is in between negative one and zero. So you would be like in between negative one and zero. So that would be where the two so one solution would be in between in between negative one and zero. And we would also have this one over here. So what two numbers would that one be in between? And it happens to be in between five and six. So you'd have to use your cursor button on your graphing calculator to get in between five and six as well. And you would need both. Okay, I'm pretty sure this would be a select all that apply for that. Okay. Another question that you might be asked, instead of solving via graphing calculator, it may be required that you solve something like this. So let's say we had 3x squared um, plus, let's see, let's see, let's see, plus 12 equals 0. In order to solve this one, if you type that in your graphing calculator, it wouldn't really work because it's going to actually be an imaginary solution, which you wouldn't necessarily know right off the bat. You could use the quadratic formula. You could also divide everything by 3 in the beginning, but I would recommend solving with square roots by subtracting the 12, getting it to equal negative 12, dividing by 3 then, because it feels more natural, and get x squared is equal to negative 4. And then when you square root, you'd get plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which you cannot type the square root of any negative number in your calculator. Any negative number in your calculator. You have to take out the i first. Never forget your plus or minus. And then square root the 4. And I'm hoping that we know that the square root of 4 is 2. So the answer to this one would be plus or minus 2i. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you got solving by graphing. Solving by square rooting, you will also have to solve using not graphing nor square rooting, but potentially the quadratic formula as well. So if we have the quadratic formula, that would be a scenario where you have something like this. 3x squared minus 5x equals, we'll go with <laughs> negative 1. Now, nope, let's go with positive 1. I think I already did a negative 1 on a different thing. So... If you have to solve this, first off, in order to use the quadratic formula, it must, must, must equal zero. So you have to be able to subtract that one over. And there's nothing that the one combines with. So it's just going to be 3x squared minus 5x minus 1 is equal to zero. And then you have your a, your b, and your c for your quadratic formula negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4ac, all over 2a. I would recommend writing that down and memorizing it for the future, so making sure that you have written that down. And if we do a negative negative b, it would be negative negative 5, that's going to be positive 5, plus or minus the square root of, in parentheses, do not forget your parentheses, do not forget parentheses, do not forget parentheses. If you forget parentheses in your calculator, you will get it wrong almost every time. If it's negative, it will definitely be wrong. Minus 4, that's a minus symbol, not a negative symbol. Minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 1. If any one of these pieces happens to not be ain't there, like if C wasn't there, it's zero. So we just do the math. We got positive 5 plus or minus 
in your calculator, you are going to type in negative 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 1, all of that part in parentheses without the square root, without the square root, because if it happens to be negative, you don't want to get it wrong just because of that. So if you did that in your calculator, you'd end up with, let's see, 25 plus 12, which is the square root of 27, all over 6. Then you have the square root of 27. The square root of 27 is something that you would need to either use a fancy calculator to simplify for you, but if you can't, it's really just the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 9 is uh, 3, so it's 3, square root of 3. So we end up with 5 plus or minus 3 square root of 3 over 6, which presents us with a unique situation where some answer choices just stop there, and they're like, done, absolutely done. Other answer choices may, in fact, split up this and end up with that. And if you end up with that, you have 5 over 6, can't do anything with that, but 3 over 6 turns into 1 half, which you don't need to write the 1, but you could write the square root of 3 over 2. So you could see either versions of those on a multiple choice test, and it really depends on who made the test, who got the multiple choice answers, and so on and so forth. All right? So that is solving with quadratic formula. You will have to do that. You will also have to do a basic factoring problem. So something that looks like this. We got 4x squared minus 36. Now this, this one's actually unique because if you are factoring ever, you sometimes will have to factor to solve and other times you're just factoring to write the factors. And if you're factoring to write the factors, you need to need to need to look to see if you can divide both things by a number. And in this case, you can. You can divide both of those by four. And then from there, you are putting that and factoring using the method of your choice. My method is the tic-tac-toe board. We put our first term here. We put our last term there, and there wasn't a middle term. This 4 isn't a term anymore. It just is going to be hanging out front. We have to figure out what multiplies to negative 9, and that would be 3 and positive 3, multiplying to down to the 9 but adding up to 0. x and x, 3 and negative 3. So we end up with x plus 3 and x minus 3 in this case. If the 4 didn't factor out, then we would have had to deal with that as well. All right, moving right along, moving right along. You have two scenarios where you have to talk about vertex form. So for vertex form, you may have to take something that looks like this and put it into vertex form. You can put it into vertex form by either A, graphing it, and then looking at the vertex, or B, using negative B over 2A to get the X value of the vertex. So your graphing calculator is probably your fallback. Um, and then negative B over 2A may be a little bit quicker. If we did negative negative 12 over 2 times 1, we would end up with 12 over 2, which is 6. And then you could plug that back in. This is going to get us our vertex, which, of course, you could visually look and be like, hey, look, graph. This is not the graph, but um, there's the vertex. You could do that. So we're plugging in the 6. 6 squared in parentheses. Oh, my squared kind of disappeared when I did that. 6 squared minus 12 times 6 plus 7 equals 36 minus 72 plus 7 is negative 29. So the downside of using a graphing calculator is that negative 29 doesn't really show up, so you have to be willing to scroll down, change the zoom, and so on and so forth. But if you do it by hand, it's a little bit quicker sometimes. If your vertex happened to be 6, negative 29, you can change the sign, keep the sign, and get your vertex form. So that is the vertex form of the parabola. This original one is known as standard form of the parabola. And then there was factored form, which is when you write the factors. Moving right along, we are 
near the halfway point. Near the halfway point, everybody. Let's say you have a vertex of, uh, let's go with negative 3, 5, and a point on the parabola of 5, negative 2. And you wanted to find the scale factor. The scale factor is the thing in, it's essentially the A value. The thing in front of the leading coefficient or in front of like the, the parentheses. So if you are ever given a vertex, you need to put it in to vertex form, change the sign, keep the sign. So that negative 3 became positive, this 5 became regular 5. Stay to 5, change, keep. And then the point on the parabola you need to plug in to solve for my red letter A in front. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 for Y, and I'm going to plug in 5 for X. So we got negative 2, A, 5 plus 3, squared, plus 5. <coughs> Excuse me. So we got negative 2 equals A times 8 squared plus 5. Order of operations dictates that we have to turn that into 8 squared, which is 64 times A plus 5. We run out of room. Minus 5 minus 5. Negative 7 is equal to 64A. And then divide by 64 and divide by 64. And you get your A is equal to negative 7 over 64. So that is the thing that would go in front. But the question was saying, find the value of A, find the scale factor, which is negative 7 over 64. That is your official answer in this case, because we're not rewriting the equation. We just wanted the value of A. All right? Moving on, moving on, moving on. Drop my phone. Let's say you have 3 plus 2i, and you need to multiply by 5i minus 7. So this is just taking an imaginary complex number, and multiplying it. And the only thing you really have to know how to do here is FOIL, which is distribute, and know that I squared, make sure you know this, write it down, I squared is equal to negative 1. So we're going to distribute the 3. We got 15I minus 21. We're going to then distribute the 2I, which would make plus 10I minus 14I and also, be very careful of my mistake. 2 times 5 is 10, but 2i times 5i is 10i squared. Combine any like terms and turn any i squareds into negative 1. So we have a 15i and a negative 14i. They are going to combine and make a single 1i. And we also have this negative 21 here that is going to combine with what is going to eventually become negative 10 because we have 10, not minus 1, but 10 times negative 1. So if we have negative 10 and negative 21, you would combine those to make negative 31. And that is all she wrote for that one. Moving right along, moving right along. The discriminant. For those of you that don't know it and have not written it down yet, if you don't know the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, that is all it is. It is b squared minus 4ac. It is b squared minus 4ac. And you need all three because if it is equal to a positive number, then you will have two real solutions. Every time it will be two real solutions. They may be considered irrational if they don't square root, but they would still be real. If it equals a negative number, then you have two complex or imaginary solutions. If it equals zero, then you get only one real solution. And not only will it be a real solution, it would be one real um, rational solution if you had to go further, because the square root of zero does square root. So if I had a problem like this, if let's say it was negative x squared minus 3x plus 2. That would be negative 3 squared minus 4 
times a, negative 1, times c, positive 2. No square root. We're just doing that. If we type that in our calculator, that would be 9 plus 8, which is 17. Is 17 a positive number? Absolutely. We would have two real solutions. Not only would they be real, they would actually be irrational because 17 does not square root. So the discriminant also tells you if it was factorable because it would have square rooted. All right. We got one more problem. If I have to graph this, y, uh, 0 is greater than or equal to y, bleh, 0 is greater than or equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. You type it in your graphing calculator, and you look at the answers, and you would be like, wow, that answer goes through 4, and this answer goes through 1. And you would be able to graph it. In this case, it would be a solid line because it has the equal to symbol underneath. That equal to symbol, solid line, no equal to symbol, dotted line. And then if it's greater than, you would shade up. So we should be shading up. But I actually, I'm, I'm changing it. So scribble it out. I'm changing it to less than because less than is a little more interesting. If it's less than, we look at the vertex and we would shade below it. And if we've started shading below, you're going to shade below everywhere in this case, all the way below that parabola. And that means that your actual solution on the number line would relate to the 1 and the 4, and it would be before the 1, so negative, one, negative infinity to 1, bracket because it includes it, parentheses around infinity because it can't include it, and from 4, bracket around the 4, to pause infinity. Okay? So, that's going to do it for this one. There is a few more problems that are probably going to be on your test that relate to find the height at an object that when it reaches the ground. Those are graphing calculator questions. What is the max height? Graphing calculator questions. You'd be just looking at the minimum height from your graphing calculator. When did it reach a height of three feet? You'd find where it is at three feet on your graphing calculator, and you'd get it from there. But other than that, we've covered all the bases. We've covered everything that you should probably really, really need to know. Until next time, stay positive, and I will see y'all later. Bye.